spotting. Do you know what it means? Well, did you ever exit the plane at a wrong time, at a wrong place and ended up not being able to get back to the landing zone and landed off? Well, spotting is very important when you are a skydiver, so let's talk about that in this video. What's up Skyvibers, it's Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, well consider subscribing and click the little bell icon to be notified whenever we do new videos all about skydiving, just like this one. Alright, so did you ever or heard other skydivers say like that it was the pilot's fault if it was a bad spot? Well, it's unfortunate that we say or we hear that around because actually spotting is the responsibility of each skydiver. What is spotting anyways? Well, spotting is making sure that you're exiting the plane at the right place so that you can make it back to the drop zone. As skydivers, we can only glide so far under our canopy. So spotting before exiting the plane is important to make sure that you're exiting at the right place in the air, all depending on the different winds in the sky. Basically, the right place where we want to be when we deploy our canopy is upwind to the landing area. This means that the wind will actually help us to get back to the drop zone. So determining the spot on any given day really is relative to the strength and direction of the winds, not only on the ground but also in altitude. Well, now that we've defined the action of spotting or making the spot, well, I wanted to go over five important elements whenever we think about spotting. The first is don't rely on technology. Prior to all the technology in the planes, well, we used to do the spotting in the air manually. We were doing that by going into the jump run and dropping a wind drift indicator to define where to exit to land at the appropriate place. So that was a little bit more complex than today. So basically now with all the winds indication we can get just being on the ground and the GPS on the plane, we are able to easily calculate the exit point from the ground. But now, even though we have this information, it's really important for each and every one of us as skydivers to take the time to spot before exiting the plane. We don't want to solely rely on technology because of course technology can fail and it doesn't take everything into consideration. Now the next element I wanted to share is pretty surprising. A green light does not necessarily mean that you need to jump right away. That's surprising because most of the planes that we're jumping out of, we have a red or a yellow light and then the green light, which is usually the pilot telling you that, hey, you can jump. Well, in fact, the green light is simply the pilot telling you that his responsibilities are done. That means that the necessary adjustments have been done on the speed and trim for a safe exit and that the air traffic control knows that skydivers are about to jump out of an airplane. But that's it. So the next thing is for you as a responsible skydiver to make sure to look down and make sure that it's a safe exit point for you. So now let's talk about what you need to do to do a good spot. So what you want to do before exiting the plane, you want to stick your head out and look straight down the plane. This is a mistake that a lot of skydivers are making. They are looking at an angle. You don't want to do that because you won't be able to see anything anyways. So you want to make sure that you look straight down and that you actually see where you are relative to your drop zone. So if you're a good and prepared skydiver, you'll have a mental image of what your drop zone looks like from up there. So then you'll be able to define where you are. And if again you are a well-prepared skydiver, well you should have defined on the ground where is the exiting point depending on the conditions of the day. If you're still not sure how to do that calculation will simply ask the jumpers around, the ones that have been jumping before you and or coaches and instructors, they are there to help you and they will give you the right information on the exit point at that time of day. So once you know that and you're up there, it's now time for you to simply verify that you're where you are supposed to be. Also, as you're looking down, you don't only want to look your location, you also want to look for clouds 
to make sure that the sky is clear for you to jump and you also want to take a look for any traffic underneath you we never know all right let's dive into element number three that i wanted to share with you know your jump run just like i said earlier you gotta know what is the defined exit point you can whether calculate it yourself with the wind speed wind direction and the help of an online calculator you can easily define the exit point although most of the drop zones out there are providing you that exact information so whether you ask manifest or you have a dashboard on your briefing area you can usually get the information of the winds at 12,000 feet which will have an impact on your exit at 6,000 feet which will have an impact on your free fall and at 3,000 feet which will have an impact on your canopy flight and so usually you'll also see the orientation of the jump run on that dashboard and you'll also have some information on the exit point usually right above the drop zone it's zero and depending on how early or late comparing to the drop zone you're exiting they're gonna give you a measurement in nautic miles usually so I know on my drop zone, they give us the indication of wind speeds at those three altitudes I talked about, but also the orientation of the jump run and the point where the red light will go on and where we are exiting, which is the green light. So all that information is there for you to use. Make sure to use it. If you're not sure, ask around, ask a coach or an instructor to tell you what all that means. But this way you'll know where you're supposed to exit and then you'll be a more responsible skydiver in verifying that just before exiting. Now let's jump to element number four, which is even if you're last. <laughs> so that's very important and that's how I got caught in doing a plan B landing. It was because I was exiting last and didn't take the time to spot. And actually when you're last to exit, it's an extra incentive to do a spot. Cause as the skydivers have been exiting the plane, well, the plane kept going forward. And at some point you may end up being too far from the drop zone to make it back. As a rule of thumb for me, whenever I look and I see that I'm way past the point where we should exit, depending on what was briefed on the ground, well, I need to decide Decide if I'm taking the risk to exit or I turn to the pilot and ask for a second run. This is something that not a lot of skydivers are aware or confident to do, but please take the time to ask Manifest or an instructor on your drop zone about if you can do another run like that when needed and how does it work. When is the limit where you ask for one? and when you can still exit so that's important to know because you better ask for a second run than landing off and hurt yourself last but not least in the process of doing a good spot the exit order is also very important these days the loads are packed with different disciplines that needs different considerations slow fall rates like big ways or fast fall rates like free flyers we got to make sure that the exit order is set properly and for that matter i did a whole video about explaining what is the exit order and why it's done that way and you can watch it by clicking right here but basically what you need to remember as a rule of thumb is really about the fall rate so we all get to be in the same wind on the same jump run whenever we're jumping different disciplines we are all experimenting the same wind in free fall so if your drop zone are doing upwind jump run which is what most of the drop zones are doing meaning that the plane is facing the wind so if we consider that what's important is the fall rate because the slower you'll fall the more you'll experience that wind effect so that will mean that you'll drift more so with that in mind the slow faller needs to go first so that they drift away from the next group which will be a less slow faller and so on and so on so this is all important and part of the spot because when the group before you is exiting you want to make sure you check that they are getting away from you before you exit that you have the right distance calculation in seconds. Now I have some bonus tips for you. The first one is take an active role in spotting. Even if you're at the back of the plane, make sure you know where you should be exiting and make sure that you're aware at least one and a half minute before exiting where you are at that moment. You have a ton of resources available to you 
to make sure you get the right information. So make sure to ask your pilot, to ask the coaches on your job zone, the instructors, the jumpers that have been jumping before you. Those are all great resources. And of course, if your drop zone has a dashboard, that's perfect too. So you have a ton of resources to help you define the spot and learn about it on your drop zone. Well, use them. So between me and you, let's say you did exit at the wrong place at the wrong time and you realize that you're gonna be a little bit too far to make it back to the drop zone. Well, you can watch this video right here, which is all about how to improve your glide to make it back to your landing area. If you wanna watch another video from Skydive Vibes, simply click here. On that, as always, thank you guys for being here. Keep jumping, stay safe and blue skies.